Hello there, it's Vanessa here from Paint, Create and Congregate. I thought I'd give everybody a, a tutorial on some watercolour and we're going to do a sweet piece on fish. So when you have set up your workstation, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to create this beautiful watercolour piece with fish. So as you can see by my setup, I have taped down my watercolour paper paper that you need would be at least 300 GSM and I say that is because it's a stronger thicker paper so when you actually add water to it it won't buckle and that's why I have also taped down my paper as you can see around the outside and all I use is just simple um, scotch painters tape you can get it anywhere from like Bunnings uh, to any of the craft stores but you can also use any other tape as long as you can easily peel it off uh, because we'll be removing that at the end of the painting. So as you can see I've got my paper taped down and when you actually tape the paper down well, what I do is I actually have a little spritzer bottle. Uh, it's just one of those little bottles that you can get from a $2 shop. I've just filled it up with water and all I do is I spritz the paper just by pumping it across the paper and I've already done that before I started the video but you don't need it too wet just enough to dampen it then leave it sit for about at least 10 minutes and then come back and then we can start sketching all right for this piece we're going to be using a couple of colors we're going to be using blues some greens and also some greys and blacks. The fish we're going to be using grey and black and that's going to give the impression that the fish are actually silver uh, rather than painting colourful fish and the background we're going to be painting all with blues and greens of the ocean. When we actually sketch using watercolour it's always best to use a mechanical pencil only because it's nice and fine and you don't need to press hard and you want the lightest impression on the paper as you can because uh, you cannot uh, rub out any lines so if you do you can see them through the painting which is no big deal a lot of people still paint and uh, leave their lines just gives a bit of character as well so what I'm going to do is first we're going to sketch the fish and you're going to pick a fish in the middle first and then we're going to build the fish on the outside. So first off we're going to just do a simple fish shape. If you'd like to just follow me, I'm going to do it a little bit darker so you could see it in the video. So just a simple fish shape. Don't have it pointed at the end, sort of round it off with its mouth, bring it around. And for the tail, just imagine the tail, nice sort of feathery type of look. Then we're going to add its gills and also a little fin impression here. And for the mouth, make sure your fish is smiling, what happy fish. So just a ever so slightly little smile and just a little circle for the eye. And we're going to be using the paint to detail that further. And the next sketch you would like to do would be the top fish because we want the fish to be layered. So you can actually imagine these fish swimming in a school. So the next fish we're going to start off and bring that around like so. We're going to do a mouth, gills, another eye. Make it a different shape eye, not just round, you can make it oval. The next fish, we're going to do a fish behind this fish. We don't really want to put all the details in, so you sort of want a peekaboo type of fish. So we're going to bring that around here. Once again, a nice loose tail. You don't want it too structured, because when we paint, we're going to let the paint do all the... Uh, the shapes and the shading. Now we'll go to the top of this fish 
and we're going to bring that around and draw another fish in here you can make these fish as big or as small as you like you can do like hundreds of fish if you like to do that just the gills there and another eye and you don't have to put a mouth on all of them you can just do like a little little hint of a mouth if you like or you can leave it blank it's up to you now we're going to do another fish behind here wrap it around there there you go now we're going to come to the bottom of the page underneath that schooling of fish we're going to have another school of fish down the bottom here so we'll start off with a fish here so start off with the nose bring it around the tail sweep it across back around going to do a mouth i'm going to do like a sort of a long mouth on this one eyeball little gills there and i'm going to do a little sort of impression of a fin and underneath that we're going to do another fish i don't want too many on the page because we are going to be painting the background with the sea Another little mouth there, little fin, and an eye. And now we're going to just add a little fish just in here, just to fill up the page. You can also have fish coming off the page as well, like as though they're swimming off. I might just do one here so it gives you an idea. Just like so. It looks like it's actually swum off the edge of the canvas. Oh, not canvas, actually watercolour paper. If you don't have watercolour, that's not a problem. You can actually do the same painting with acrylic paints by using a canvas and acrylic paint. And all you have to do is just water down your acrylic paints. Now we're going to add this fish in here. And you'll see I did a slightly different tail. I did more of a just a simple two-point tail there, just to give the painting a little bit of interest. And the gills and the fin and eye. And just the mouth there. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the fish, the school of fish on the page. And now we are ready to paint. And what we're going to do, we're going to paint the outline of the fish first. And we're going to be using watercolour. So what I've got is, do you like my little sweet dishes I have here? They're actually shells. Sea shells. I use these when I paint anything to do with the sea. They make really good trays, paint trays. So what I have got, I have got uh, Windsor & Newton watercolour little tubes. You can get these from the craft stores and you can buy online now considering it's locked down. And this one is Payne's Grey. It's not black, it's just under a hint of um, like a darker grey. But it's a nice forgiving sort of colour when you're doing the outline. So you can squeeze a little bit like a pea size in your tray. Or if you don't have these paints, not a problem at all. All you can uh, you can use is I've got these little pans, and these are watercolor pans. And all you do is you just wet your brush and wet the pan with the pigment, and you use those onto the canvas. So I'm going to do a bit of both for you, just so you can see the difference. 
And when you're using watercolour and painting with watercolour paint, you use the appropriate brushes, which is the watercolour brushes. As you can see, they're quite soft and they absorb a lot of water. And that's what we'd like. We'd like the nice flow effect. I have size 8 here. Uh, I use that a lot to use the background because you can actually put more water on the background and more paint to make it more pliable. I've also got a size 4 with a nice point, which I can use for the edges. And I've also got another size 4, which is slightly a little bit bigger and a bit fluffier. That also is going to be pulling in the, the colours and the paint into the fish as well, which you'll see by the demonstration. All right. So first off, I'm actually going to get the size 4 with a nice tip. Just pick whatever brush you like in your kit that you find that you know that you'll be able to do the outline. It could be a little bit smaller, it could be a little bit bigger. It's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do first, we're going to wet the brush. And in this pan, I've actually got the Payne's Grey. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit on the side here. So we've got a little bit that's a little bit thinner than the thick paint. Because watercolour, you can go light, you've got to start light and go dark. Once you go dark, it's very hard to sort of lighten it without adding a lot of water. So see how we've got the different consistencies now? We've got the heavy body, like that's a straight watercolour paint. This has got a little bit of water, it's a little bit darker, and I've also got a lighter little option there as well. So what we're going to do first, just to play it safe, we're going to start off with the lighter one, just so I can give you an example when we're painting the fish. So I'm going to start off with the top fish so then we work our way at the top and work down we're not putting our hands over our paper and having the potential of smudging so just use the tip of your brush and outline your fish just like so and i'm going to go into the darker one now that one we made because it's a little bit too light and we're going to go over that And if you find your hands a bit shaky, just rest your hand on the paper and use that as the steady, sort of like a tripod, just using your hands. So a bit more of the grey paint, just like so. Follow that around. Make sure it's not too wet because you don't want it to sort of run. And see how, if you want to have a little bit darker, you can put your paintbrush in the direct paint and then step it in just like that and brush it through. And make sure you don't do it too thick. You don't want it too thick of an outline of the fish. So you really use the tip of the paintbrush. Now under the tail. And if you run out of the made up uh, grey paint, just add a little bit more in the well there and get the right colour. There we go. And I'm going to show you how we use the pan of pan of the uh, watercolour. I actually have the grey and I also have the black here. So I'm going to start off with the black. So what you do is you wet the pan, swirl it around, just put plenty of water in there. Whenever I do watercolour, I always have a test piece of watercolour paper just so I can see the different consistency before I paint. So see how that's a little bit too dark? So I'm just going to wet my brush don't add any more paint, but the paint that's already in there, so the residue, just gives you the lighter impression. So that just gives you an example of the different colour. So we're just going to wet that again. Brush it on there first. Okay, that's that good consistency there. And I'm going to paint in the gills. And the eye. The eye I'd like quite 
prominent because you want it to sort of pop. So dip it directly into the pan, like make sure it's a little bit wet. And then with the tip of the brush, we're going to do the eye. You don't want a too structured eye, you want it quite loose. See how I've sort of painted the eye without actually just doing a circle and a, um, a pupil in the middle. And we're going to do the mouth. Just going to get more of the black there. Okay. So once you've done this fish, I want you to do the whole of the rest of the other fish. But once again, start from the top and work your way down and make sure that you don't put your hand or smudge. It will dry pretty quick. Okay. Now I'm going to swap brushes and I'm going to get the other size forward. It's a bit more fluffy, so that hasn't got like a tip on it. And I'd like I'm going to use that because I'm going to be pulling in the colours that we've done or the greys. So I'm going to wet my brush. And we're going to dip it in to the grey, the little bit of the grey that we made there, it's a little bit darker. What we're going to do though is we're going to be stepping in and just painting a bit of the grey on the fish. But you don't want to paint the whole fish grey. You just want to imagine it's shimmering in the ocean with the reflection. And if you have find that you've actually done the outside a bit dark and you go, oh, no, it's a bit too heavy, not a problem at all. What you do is you just put a little water on your brush, a little bit there, and just pull it upwards. So wherever your water goes on watercolour, that's where the paint will disperse to. So if I accidentally went outside the line here and I did with the, the black, it would run down. So just be a bit careful. Now I'm going to do a little bit of the tail. It doesn't have to be too perfect. You you really want it to be quite loose and relaxed. And, they're all, and every fish is going to be different, which is going to be really good. If you wanted your fish colourful, by all means, you could put more colour into this. I just wanted to keep it a little bit neutral for today. Just darken up a bit spots, put a little bit of black in. Just around. There we go. And a bit more black. So it's all about the starting light and then layering. It's all about layering with watercolour. So I just want to create a little bit more drama for the fish. Make it sort of step out so a bit more of the the grey. I, I find the paint's grey or the, a dark grey is good to work with because if I do black, it just gets a bit too heavy and it's very hard to remove the paint. You don't want to wet the paper too much with the water, but you want enough consistency where the paint will actually flow. If you put too much water on watercolour paper, it will start to peel or lift. You can always go and uh, move on to another fish and then come back and then add some more layering once that dries. So once it dries, you can come back and add more colour. So I'm going to do another fish now. So once again, I'm going to get that size 4 pointed tip and I'm going to mix some more of the paint grey into here just so it's... A little bit on the end there, not too much. And I'm going to outline the other fish. Once I do this fish, I'm going to go back up the top, so I'm not going to be smudging my hand through. A little loose eye. Some fish will look... 
very serious. Okay, so I'm going to come up the top here. Just going to bring that around. So use the tip of the brush. Don't use it flat because you'll get really f fat lines. So you really just want to use the tip of your brush. And see how it's a bit light. So I'm going to dip the brush in the watercolour paint. And then I'm just going to darken it. I'm just going to go over the tail here while I've got a bit of paint on my brush. With painting you'll sort of realise when you're painting that your hand just gravitates to a certain section of the canvas. So just go with it. Now I'll finish off this fish here. So it's best to do all the outline first, then come back and then fill in the fish. I find that to be a little bit better because then you get all your shapes and then you have like a outline for you to go back and fill in, a bit like colouring in. It's very relaxing this painting. It's not too difficult, it's for all levels. Children can do this as well. Perhaps you can even get your family together and do a big painting session and have them all lined up at the end. Use the tip of the brush to get those angles that you'd like, the points to the tail. Okay. Seem to have a lot of birds in the background today. A nice day in Sydney today. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this fish. You see how I've broken up the schools? Like I haven't condensed them too much because I sort of want that nice natural movement. You can imagine yourself in the ocean swimming along with your scuba gear or your snorkeling equipment. You can imagine this school of fish swimming past. The simple gills and the fins and the nice mouth, another eye. Dipping into the Payne's Grey. If you don't have Payne's Grey and you've only got black, you can use black but just lighten it a little bit by adding a little bit more water to it it's always a good color to have in your kit is the paint gray it's very good for outlining anything really Move over to this fish. If you find your hands not that steady, you don't you can actually do little short strokes just like that and then join them up. 
do you find if you do a long line and you get a bit wobbly that's how to stop it so just little short strokes and then fill them in and you have more control then it's like if you try and draw a circle freehand and there's always that one side that goes a bit a bit out bigger eye there so not see how that eye there I've just not completed it all the way around just left it open it just creates a, an, a real loose eye for the fish I suppose you don't want a loose eye fish but you know what I mean okay now we've got the last fish down the bottom here Yeah, I've done short strokes and it just sort of leads into the other stroke that you just did. Just gives you a bit more control. Sometimes you paint and you just you get the shakes. You go shake your hands out, go make yourself a cup of tea and come back. Usually at the end of the day your hands seem to get a bit shaky I find. Bit more of the paint grey for the eye. Just a little different eye shape there. All right. So now we've got the outlines of the fish done. We're going to just rinse our brush out. Just push your brush on the side. We're going to go back to the size four brush that I had. And it's got a little bit more fluff it's not a pointed tip it's quite wide and we're going to use that paints gray and we're going to start painting the the fish but not all the fish remember we just want little bits of it you still want a little bit of white showing so just dab it on really really loosely so just mix a bit more of the gray up there remember your test piece so See how that's a little bit dark? Don't put that on your fish just yet because it'll just come out like a big blob like that and it'll be just a bit too dark. So get your test piece and just get that correct consistency that you'd like. But even though I've done that, there's, and if you happen to do that by mistake, it's not a problem. Just add a bit more water and just thin it out a bit. And remember when it does dry, it will dry a little bit lighter too because the paper absorbs it after a while. Okay. You can even sort of see how that technique there, I've run out of water on my brush and it's become a bit dry. That's also a, a nice technique as well it just sort of gives that roughness all right on to the next fish so just wet your brush and i might start with this one here not a bit more black there i think sort of step it in and let it sort of run a little bit i'm going to leave that a little bit bare like that just to give it some interest there and i'm going to go back to the first fish that we did just so i can tell you see how after it's dry you can go back and then you can darken up little bits so just make sure your brush is not too wet you want more of the paint on there than than water just step that through Now I'm going to go to this fish here. Let's just continue this all the way through the fish. So really relax your wrist and really just have a nice painting session. With watercolour, a lot of people are quite scared of it, but this. They think that um, they can't correct it once they 
paint, which sometimes is most likely true or does happen, but with practice, you can get better. It's all about practice, about knowing your brush, about knowing the paint consistency. But no, I really enjoy watercolour. More mixing. You can paint around the face as well, just by adding a little bit. Not too much because you don't want a dark face because you want the eye to still stand out. See how I've gone over the line here? That's not a problem. I'll just leave it like that. You can even add a bit more of the dark. Oh, might be good if I put some more paint on there. What you can do, you can imagine the fish sort of having a bit of a shadow underneath. And because I've done a bit of dark at the top, just bring some at the top there as well, just to pull it in a little bit. Yeah, you see I've done that rough scratching, I've just turned the brush on the side and I've just flipped it. It gives that, you want that sort of loose rust feel, rustic feel. Okay, we'll do this fish over here. Just mix some more in here because I've actually run out, run out. Oops, I dropped it. If that ever happens, just get a bit of tissue or a sponge and just blot that up. I'm just going to go fix that up. There we go. Now back over to this fish over here. Once it dries, it will settle and you'll see all the colour of the grey come out of the fish. Especially when we do the background in a moment. The uh, grey and white fish will just pop. Just pull it down. Three more fish to go. Just turn that there. I'm going to make this a little bit dry. I do like that texture. Dry brushing in that fish there so I'm going to try and duplicate that one here and sort of scratch it in just be really gentle with your brushes try not to make them be too rough because you don't want to upset the bristles even though they can they can be formed back into shape with just putting them back in water and Letting them loose. Okay. This fish here. Yeah, so watercolour doesn't always have to be all wet painting. You can actually do that limited dry. There we go, that's sort of scratch it in. Last fish down the bottom. Oh, 
not. I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the paint grey. Just make it a little bit darker. Because these fish here, they stand out nicely. But this one here is a little bit faint. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shading texture to this fish. Just so it's not lost. Sort of pull it upwards. When that dries, it'll settle and soak into the paper. With watercolour when you're painting, you can paint as slow or as fast as you like. With more precision painting, of course, you paint slower. There we go. Just see how it just... The fish is not hidden, so it comes off the page a bit more. And I'm just going to do the same with this one here, just a little bit. And you can just blot it, you don't have to actually do paint strokes. This bottom fish here as well. I'm going to put a little bit just on the back here. So you just imagine that fish here is giving a little bit of shade on this fish here, so like a shadow. So it's actually painting a fish silver. It comes off across very similar to like the silver impression that we're using grey and we're leaving the white of the paper to create that effect. Okay. Alright. So what we're going to do, you're going to let that dry for probably about five minutes. Just let it all sort of settle a bit. And then once that's dry, we're going to go back and use the size 4 with the pointed brush. Go back in and we're going to use the paints grey again. And you just want a little bit on your tip here. And we're going to refine some of those outside of the fish lines. Just to make it pop a little bit. Because sometimes when the paint dries it just sort of gets a bit lost. So you don't want to outline all the fish. But just bits here and there. A little bit more of that. Just in bits, not all of it. See how this tail here is totally lost in that other fish? Just make sure all that's dry, but we're going to dip it into the paint. And we're going to put that tail back in. So it sort of got washed away. There we go. All right, I'm going to wash that out. If you find that your water is really dark, like dirty, then go and change it. Uh, mine's okay. I'm going to leave mine as it is. And we're going to be using the blues of the ocean now, which is going to be fun. Okay, so I'm going to move this. I'm going to take the greys away as so we're finished with the greys. And I'm going to bring in my blues. I have a nice Othello blue. I have a dark blue. And I have a another shade of blue. I love my blues. And I also have the aqua blue. So these blues we're going to have in the background of the of the painting. So I'm going to put those over here next to my water because when you dip it into the pan you don't want to have to travel your brush over the top to dip it into the colour over here and drag it across there because you'll drip it on to the actual painting. 
Okay, now to give this beautiful colour. All right, so when we're doing a background of any of the painting on watercolour, what we do, we actually wet the background of where we're going to put the paint and let the paint disperse and do its thing. So I'll just show you an example. I've got a size 8 watercolour brush, so it's nice and uh, thick and it holds a lot of water. It's nice, soft hair. So we're going to dip that into the water. And then we're going to paint. I'm going to give an example here first. So keep it away from the fish because that's we've just recently painted that. So wherever we put the water on the on the uh, paper, that is where the pigment of the watercolor paint is going to travel to. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of make it go off the page. So you can paint it up to the tape because when we peel the tape off, we actually have that nice border. So a bit more paint, a bit more water. So you want it wet enough that you can imagine if you put paint in there that it will disperse. So to give you that idea now, so that's quite wet there. Now I'm going to wet my brush. This colour here is a beautiful blue, so we're going to dip it into the pan once again i as i said before I always have a test piece of paper so that is the color of what we're going to put in there so you can dip it in there and you can make it darker or you can make it lighter so we're going to dip it into there here and now simply step the colour through. Isn't that pretty? So you can imagine the movement of the water by doing this clever technique. Let me put this pan over here. So that's the uh, Bethello Blue. It's a beautiful colour. I don't feel the whole of the, uh, the wet section leave it a little bit blank and see how I've got this beautiful turquoise color I love turquoise we're going to wet our pan and get a little bit of that color here and we're going to step in that color also isn't that beautiful So you can even do this colour first, then step in the blue. So just sort of around the edges of the fish. And you want to do this process for the whole of the background. You can cover the whole paper or you can just do little bits. So I'm going to just give you a demonstration on how I've completed this. And the quicker you work in this section, the better. You just sort of want it to be really creative and really loose. So I'm just going to wet that. It doesn't matter if your brush is, your water's blue because it's going to be blue background anyway. So really step in the water. And you don't want to paint too much, uh, wet too much of the area first without putting the paint on because it'll dry. So just do a section at a time, about you know, 10, 15 centimetres at the most. So dip into the blue again and look at that. See how it just does its own little bit of magic. Right again. When people see you do this, they think you're really professional. And dip that blue in again and you can go dark or light it's hardly up to you and when it dries you'll see the swells and you'll see the patterns and a bit more of the turquoise just step in the turquoise and you can actually do greens as well I've got a nice sort of 
Christmas green tree green here and I'll show you what that looks like you don't have to do a whole lot of the, the green you can just do really it's this sort of gives the impression of so you can imagine seaweed you don't want too much you just want a couple little hints of the green there we go all right now we're going to fill in this bit here just remember to keep your brush away from the black or the uh the the black and the grey because you don't want that sort of going into the colours. So just fill in that blank there, a little bit of that blue, and you can just push the brush in. And you'll you'll find that it's quite wet. So whatever you do, don't lift up your paper at all. When you're doing watercolour paint, especially this step, you leave it flat on the table. Don't pick it up to say, "Oh, what does that require?" Because it'll run. See how I've sort of left it like really rough edges on the outside, no crisp edges, it's quite loose. Sort of want that impression because when I peel this off and it's in a frame, it'll just be uh, a center, center point of the painting. So wet this area again. Use the tip of the brush to go into the tight spaces there we go so step in those colors you, it's beautiful because it gives the nice swirl of the ocean and you can also go back to areas as well and darken them just make sure you've got enough water on there that, that's still wet that it, it will disperse a bit. Now we're going down here. Just wet that area there. Under the fish. And that bit there. A little bit there, just be careful. All right, now we get back into the blue. It's really good. It's quite uh, relaxing. It's very satisfying just seeing where you put your brush, that's where it goes. So you get a variety of blues and greens in the, a lot of paint pans and you don't have to spend a lot of money on paint either so if you've only got a student kit you can still do this painting quite successfully uh, that's all about the pigmentation the more expensive the paint the higher pigmentation uh, and that's in time sometimes watercolor does fade so if you're going to start off with watercolor paint start off with the medium price range and then work your way up but I started with the, um, the the budget ones, and I did quite a nice few paintings with those. And I've just got them displayed in uh, not a bright room because the sunlight will fade it. But they haven't aged that that much either, so it's quite okay. Right, so a bit more of the blue here. And so I'm going to go back to the green. I think it just needs a hint of green down the bottom. But you imagine the seaweed sort of poking through the bottom. You don't need much, just a just a hint. So it's like a shading. There we are. Uh, if you put other blues experiment I'm going to use this other blue here and I'm just going to step in a couple of other shades of blue this is a little bit of interest 
when it dries you'll see the effect that it that it makes it's just gorgeous Okay, just out of a bit of a play, it's going to tidy up a little bit. It doesn't have to be all filled in, you can leave gaps. There we are, so there is the watercolour school of fish painting. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Stay tuned, I'm going to do some more and upload those onto the Facebook page. And uh, happy painting and I'll see you soon. Hope we'll be in person teaching again in October. Take care everyone. Bye.